Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, I hope you're all doing well. So uh, we'll wait a few seconds, uh, give time to uh, people to uh, connect to our to uh, today's webinar, or I should say masterclass. Um, today, I'm delighted to be joined by Mr. Philippe Lozier, an esteemed engineer here from our current technical services uh, at Solino. So uh, Philip will be leading today's masterclass. And uh, before we dive in, I'd like to highlight a few key points. First of all, at the conclusion of the webinar, we'll have a quick dedicated QA session. Um, so please use the QA feature at the bottom of your screen to submit your question. We're eager to address as many as we can during this time. If you have an additional question after the masterclass, our team is available to assist you. So please don't hesitate to reach out. You, uh, you will have a link to uh, Mr. Rose's email after the class. Your feedback is really important to us. So please, after the masterclass, you'll be able to access a brief survey. We'd, we would greatly appreciate if you could spend a few minutes to share your thought. Also, you'll be able to request your certificate of attendance, uh, access our download downloadable tools related to geosynthetics and a link to connect with our expertise to defile it. And we'll keep an eye out for an email tomorrow, summarizing all the resources and information, information shared today. So uh, thank you again for joining us. Without further ado, I'll hand over the virtual stage to Philip. The, the audience is yours. Thank you very much, Benjamin. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. So I'd just like to say hi to people from, uh, I'm going to assume from a new, Newfoundland, uh, New Baltic PEI, New Nova Scotia, Ontario, Quebec also. So hi, everyone. We even have uh, people from the state. So uh, we're going to jump right into it, uh, talk about our geotextile, a very great product uh, that uh, every uh, engineers uh, need to, to learn and all the, the great uh, products that have benefits for construction projects. Uh, so just a, a, just a, the agenda and traction of company, who we are, our synthetics, what do we have, the standards, special products, certification, and also the documentation. Our company was founded in 1977. Uh, it's the, we are the biggest uh, HDP pipe manufacturers for the process of Quebec and the Atlantic province. Uh, for um, activities of sector, for businesses, more than 500 employees. It's a family-owned business. We do primarily where we are focused in is into Solino pipe, Solino textile, service, and also recycling. For today, we're going to focus mainly on the textile portion of the business we have. Uh, and so uh, this is just a quick slide what the Solino textile does. Uh, we develop and manufacture um, non-moving textile for applications. And here we see just a, a small picture of, of a quality control we do with our products. There's four major sectors where we do uh, um, push our products, acoustics, horticultural, industrial, and geotechnical. So we're going to focus today on the geotechnical. Um, so some new textile as well. Uh, the textile has many functions. So we're going to go through one at a time, very simple to go through, but we just need to wrap our head around that. So we have separation, filtration, reinforcement, drainage, protection, erosion control, and soil stability. Um, so the geotextile, um, there's two big uh, families. It's uh, We have uh, the non-woven, geotextile, the woven textile, and, and then if we bring those two together, then we'll get the geocomposite. Um, so the non-woven, it's a needle punch. So basically, this is what we're showing here. Uh, so you bring your fibers, you kind of make a, like a thick layer of, 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 of um, our fabric, uh, of, of the geotextile uh, strand, and then it's kind of squeezed together, and then mechanically, there's some needles that kind of intertwine uh, the fiber so they can keep the shape. Um, just a picture of our equipment where this is manufactured in Laval, uh, just north of Montreal, province of Quebec. Um, 
with the geotextile, we have two big families, I want to say, as properties where we could see them uh, on any projects. We have the hydraulic portion, which would be the filtration, separation, drainage, and also the mechanical, for which we would see the reinforcement, protection, um, and control. So uh, depending on what your application is, then you can go in and try to figure out, find out where is it more of a hydraulic or more a mechanical application. All of our geotextile that we provide, uh, we have a data sheet. And with the data sheet, you'll find the mechanical, the hydraulic uh, properties, and also the dimensions uh, on the role of, of, of the product we, you, we can provide. Couple of definitions um, that can uh, help out uh, to wrap our head around the uh, geotextile. Uh, so permittivity. Uh, so it's the measure of the water flows per unit surface area and per unit pressure drop through a filter. Permit permeability, um, maybe a little bit more uh, easier to understand is that the calculation, the permittivity multiplied by the product thickness. So in a, in a way, Permeability is how easy water goes through um, through this, and it's more of a notion of a soil when we think about permeability. But then, um, truly, the, there's only one good test for geotextiles: is the permittivity, where it takes into account the thickness of the geotextile. And it's expressed in uh, speed, it's time, uh, uh, the on uh, minus one. So now we're going to go more into the different types of um, um, where we see uh, the geotextiles. So there's in the filtration, very easy concept. It's just that we want a, the water to go through, but we, we need to block the small particles. So we're going to let the water go seep through it but retain the solids. So this is what the, those are types of application that we have very straightforward. Uh, so filtration around clean crushed on basically. Um, so it's the objective is to let the water go through, but to capture, to retain the fine particles. Um, so we see just some uh, typical application that we, we can have, you know, the excavator installing a drain pipe surrounded by crushed on with the geotextile. And the preferred geotextile for the, those type of application would be the TX90 or the Rutex. If we keep going on, so other pro product with filtration. So the the first, the first I'm just going to go back one. So this is more of a, a small product. Uh, well, so not small, but thin. So we don't we don't need to to have a strength. In this application, we just want to filtrate the water go through. So when we're thinking of another type of filtration, well, we may to need to go with a thicker product. The reason is, is that uh, when we see the image right here, we see the rip wrap along the river banks. So the energy from the waves is going to crash or dissipate it by the big rocks. That water is not necessarily stopped. It's going to go more like inland. And then, um, but it's important to have a good geotextile, the good thickness because of the rip wrap to protect. And also as the water is gonna come back from the land towards the river. So now this water will carry particles, but the geotextile is right there so that to maintain the integrity behind the rocks so that the fines are not washed away. So uh, again, the depending on the applications where you need the filtration, you may want to go with a thinner product because you don't need to expense too much dollars. But when you need more protection also with the filtration, then you may need to go with a heavier product. Separation, basically just as um, to just to prevent the mixing of different products, very straightforward. Uh, these mainly are for roadways. Uh, so we have the TX90, uh, TX70 that we would uh, propose uh, regarding this. Uh, so again, this is to prevent the loss of granular material penetration, conserve the sub-foundation, improve compaction, and retain drainage. Uh, anytime you have these type of projects, it's important to 
like we we are we are familiar with the crown, the slope on each side from the center line towards the ditch or the curb. So to we need to reproduce this crown at the sub foundation level also. Reinforcement, improved bearing capacity of the soil. Um, so a separator helps to preserve the foundation. So it's all about uh, allowing the water to, to move, but without removing the, the small particles. Uh, it, any type of projects, it's always if we master water, if we control where the water is in our project, it will help the perennity of the pro of any instruction or construction. So we have four solutions when it comes uh, for, for this these type of applications. Right now we are showing the woven geotextile. So the woven, we can see very easily that we have uh, just strand that are woven, uh, you know, to, to make it the product that we have right here. So this is very thin but it has a lot of strength. But as we're, it's mentioned right here, it offers a lower permeability. So the water, you need a height of water for the water to go through the product uh, compared to a non-woven where the water easily goes through. This one, not the same. So depending on where this is installed, um, so you need to think about that. An example of this situation, you need a, a good crown on your sub foundation for your road, because if you don't have a good crown, you could have pocket of water under your, in your road structure, which is not a good thing. Geocomposite, now we're uh, combining basically a woven, a woven product with the non-woven is kind of all brought together. So then you're gonna, go in and, and get the, the great quality of both products in the same one. So uh, we have the Rutex 2 or the TXR, a comb combination of woven and non-woven. So like I said, it just brings everything together and it's easy for a contractor to install on a job site also. Um, and it will uh, offer some transmissivity. The water can go through the product and also plays a separation role. Uh, and increase um, the um, the road structure itself. It may even allow to reduce the thickness uh, of your granular on the project. So if your project is um, away far from uh, your source of crushed stone, so it may be interesting to use these product to dimin to diminish to, to make it your thickness of crushed stone less. So that could be potentially you could save money. Um, just a few um, pictures of, of the product. We can see on the left one, just to you see that the, 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 it is a composite material. When we ship the product, it's, it's raw, uh, obviously, but it's, it's the right way. So we need the, the woven product under and the, the non-woven portion at the surface. So we ship the, the roll in the right it's rolled properly, so a contractor just push and unroll the product without any issue, and you do a small overlap. So uh, other uh, pictures of projects, I always install them on the infra line. So yeah, this is an important uh, aspect. So you would do your, your first excavation, you shape your sub base uh, native soil with your crown, and then you install your composite, and after there you go with your crushed on just a picture of a projects where it was a uh, very uh, soft. <laughs> so the Kinarly Mills range uh, Mafet project, uh, you see that the contractor would have removed some of the uh, weak material at the surface, the native can the mud away, push that away, reshape your crown, and then you would go with your uh, reinforcement. So right here we see on the left, we start by shaping your uh, native soil with the crown. Then you have your non-woven geotextile. This would be separation so that you don't have a, that the, the pro, to isolate each product so that you don't have an intermix of fines within your stone. Now we see the rip wrap on top of it. And then finally, we go with the non-woven geotextile for reinforcement. 
So separation underneath your stone, bigger material, then uh, reinforcement. And, and after that, then you would have your smaller uh, crushed stone uh, on top of it. So you can clearly see uh, what has been done right here. A third solution would be the geogrid. So, so the geogrid, we have the BX2000 and BX3000. So basically this is just a, a square opening, um, you know, very square in the geometry, the way it is done, it's fa fabricated. It acts like a snowshoe on uh, unstable uh, ground. The idea right here is that it's gonna distribute the loads over a large area so that you don't sink. It's a snowshoe. Uh, offer some um, gravity equivalence. It's, it facilitates also access to sites where, where there's some difficult conditions because it easily can be uh, unrolled on the ground and then a bit, bit of crushed stone on top of it will uh, help out um, access on job sites. Just some uh, pictures on projects where we uh, we did um, use some of GeoGrid. So clearly we see that it's very muddy and a very difficult site. So you just basically unroll your GeoGrid and with an overlap and then you just push your stone on top of it and, and, and it does a very good job. Finally, we can go for the um, top possible solution for projects. So that's to combine the strength of the geogrid and also with the separation. So the idea right here is that you would have your geotextile on the ground and on top of it, you would have your geogrid. So the geotextile will act as a separator uh, under the grid. And then your grid on top of it will bring the reinforcement about it. So right here, we see a project, Mooring Heights, uh, where the geotextile is laid on the ground, geogrid on top of it, and then um, material is just pushed on it. So um, that's the, the best of both worlds, basically. Other projects where these are uh, uh, projects in uh, the Sagni area, it, this is a big, um, wooden lot uh, with a lot of um, stockpiles of, of wood and, and everything, very industrial site, uh, which was very soft and the difficulty with the, the challenge of maintaining that uh, as a good yard, a good and stable yard. So the object right here, the, um, the goal of this project was to bring a bit of stability to this large parking lot uh, for industrial site. Uh, so we see right here that uh, they went with the solution of a geotextile for a separation and then reinforcement with the geogrid on top of it. We see it's very easy to, uh, to install. Um, so uh, with a, a good overlap, very uh, nice project, well done. Other projects with uh, geotextile uh, with the installation. So we have the separation, filtration, reinforcement. Um, so when we're do the, doing the installations, you, you got to think of where we're going, uh, wh where is it uh, installed? Uh, just for a simple separation, uh, an overlap of 300 millimeters, 12 inch, 20, that's fine. Um, if we need to reinforce, so it's not it's not only a separation, it's a reinforcement with the geotextile. So then we we suggest that you have a larger or wider overlap of 450 millimeters. We don't want to have, have any separation between the layers because of the reinforcement. A way of um, cutting the cost because if if you have a large project, a lot a lot of quantity of geotextile on a project, that 450 millimeter overlap will well, you know, uh, taken needs to be taken into account for the quantity of geotextile you need in a project. So one way of reducing the numbers of, of geotextile on a project uh, would be if you have a sewing machine, basically you would sew the two panels together so you don't need this overlap again. So that's ways of, of doing it. With the geogrid, basically just fast, fasteners like a, a tie wrap, 
basically just to attach the geogrid together. So those are ways of so saving um, uh, on on material on job sites. Drainage, well, uh, this this is obviously another function to promote the drainage of water from infrastructure. Um, the drainage, well, is to basically to to manage the water. So if you can bring the water away from your infrastructure, now you're gonna uh, pro uh, prolong the the life of this infrastructure. So reduce water content in the road, reduce risk of pavement deformation, water, cold freezing. I mean, we're in Canada. Uh, so, and increase the service slice of, of all of those roads. So if we can manage, basically, uh, a road is in difficulty when you have three things happening. You have water, cold, and fr frosty grounds. So, um, so if you can control one of those aspects, then we're going to win this challenge. Uh, obviously, we there's nothing for us to do with cold. We're in Canada. Uh, the frosty ground, where we can always remove a clay or silt ground to be replaced by more of a drainage product like crushed stone. That's fine, but if we can better control our water, we're going to win more easily. So this these products are there to um, to help us out, redirect water, so that we don't have this issue with water. So the solutions we have, the gel composites, is to change. We have a, a core between two non-woven product. So we, if you can see right here. The darker shades, but in the center we have more than non-woven. So this this is again to to allow water to go to travel within the fabric itself. So the product we have, we have the Drenatex and Trencotex. So uh, both are very similar, uh, but I'm just gonna go to the next slide. So right here, uh, you can see. Um, that we have a, a drain uh, on each side of the road. And on that drain, we have that geotextile that's kind of attached to that drain uh, to, to, to bring the water to the drain tile. So that drain will be dumped into a catch basin or the storm system of the road. So here we see a picture. This is easier for us to understand. So. Right here, we can see a sleeve where inside we would have our drainage pipe. It would be a four inch, six inch pipe, so 100 millimeters or 150 millimeters, a perforated pipe inside. Those panels are uh, 300 meters in length. And then we see it's like a, you basically just uh, to, to go back, like shades, basically just going up to, in, to intercept any water coming from the ground. Um, just another picture showing. Um, the product installed, um, very easy. We see right here a bit of uh, detail on the product, the Drencotex. Uh, those are walls of 30 meters in, in length. The height is about 0.45 meters to 1.2 meters in, in height. Um, so it can have a, uh, a sleeve for 100 millimeter or, or 150 millimeters for the drain. It has a rope inside to help the contractor install the drainage pipe inside. Uh, so this is very straightforward, very great um, strategy to control your water on their road. Now for protection uh, within the geotextile, so for protection, well, we're gonna look into a, um, a diff, uh, like a thicker material to protect whatever is required to be protected. Um, instead of uh, on each side of the geomembrane, so so what's happening if you have a project with a geomembrane, it could be a landfill or underground storage or like a small pond like what we're seeing right here. So this geomembrane, of course, will keep the water where it needs to be kept, uh, but we want to protect this geomembrane. If it's punctured, well, you kind of, defeats the purpose. So the geotextile is there to protect. It's not reinforcement, it's just there to protect. So the first geotextile on the ground, your geomembrane, then another layer of geomembrane on top of it. So then it's going to be protective. Um, so the product that we would refer right here would be the TX800 or the TX1600. 
and we see the thickness right here, 3.5 or 5.8 millimeters. It's a few pictures uh, of, of where these products uh, are installed. Uh, basically, this would be like an underground storage. So, so there would be a first layer of a woven, non-woven uh, like non geotextile underneath the geo, geo membrane, and then geo textile on top of it. We see just over here another possible uh, application for uh, the geo membrane. Uh, so we would have geotextile, geomembrane, geotextile, and then the rock and the rest of the product that is required. We also have uh, on the geocomposite side, another product. Um, we call this the TXMP. So this is um, to be used around a catch basin or manholes. It could be a sanitary manhole, any structure, concrete structure in the road. So the, the concept, right, is that you would wrap. So you need to wrap. So let's say that this is my manhole. You just kind of wrap around your structure. So with the geotextile touching the concrete, that's going to, at the is going to grip so it won't slide. Uh, so with the fabric touching the concrete, so we're going to leave the PVC part of, uh, of this installation. So this, if there's any frost, and there will be a uh, frost. So the frost will slide uh, on, on the PVC liner. So it will um, prevent the structure itself to be moved around. Because if we don't have this product and there's frost around the structure, the concrete structure, the frost will move because water freezes as expands, so it will move sections, and this is where you're going to have some issues with uh, uh, small particles being pulled inside the, the structure. So this will prevent the movement of the structure, uh, and the fabric inside that is touching the concrete will allow water to seep through and go down and away from your structure. So that's the TXMP. The picture right here, we see uh, when it's installed. The, the It's not very wide for our products. It's only one, about 1 1.8 meters. Uh, you just need to protect the frost section of your installation. You don't need to be very deep with that. Uh, so with our, with our products, we have um, all kinds of um, different situations where uh, we can uh, installs uh, so di different province different ways different standards or way of calling for a geotextile so we have a table that shows um like for the province of quebec um this is where if depending on the function the function could be reinforcement filtration uh, protection separation protection uh, and so in the BNQ, the standard in the process of best is this is where we see the R1, R2, and everything. And then we see um, also with the uh, MTQ, and then the products we have. So in the left side, so the products Rutex, TRX will meet those the, those um, uh, standards. Here we have those tables uh, for the province of Ontario. We see the products we have. And also the Ontario specs, class one non-woven, class one woven, and so on. With um, uh, with the other pro pro province, New Brunswick, they refer to textile to be N1, N2, N3, N4. So for us, we have the TX70, 90, 170, and 400. Um, Nova Scotia, same thing, same idea, three different ways of calling for geotextile class one, two, three, and our products. So we have those tables that we can uh, easily provide to you uh, where th those products are approved and accepted in those provinces. Now, we move towards more special products of, of what we have. So for sediment, we have sediment retention, turbidity curtains, blanket for erosion, and geocells. 
depending on what uh, what your application is. Sediment retention. Um, these are very common, just a filter fence that we see on all job sites as a virtual function for the construction industrial by providing economical solution. So this is a very straightforward, just uh, some pictures of where those can be uh, uh, installed. A another type of product we have is the, um, um, the um, sorry about the French there, it's the um, curtains, um, Jean, Jean, uh, Benjamin, what's the English? I'm just having a oh, no, no, not for... <laughs> curtains, um, two boutique curtains. Yeah. Uh, so the idea is right here is that you see that you have a, 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 a I mean, it's all attached. It's, it's very um, opaque. And, and so you see the portion where it floats, it typically floats. And then you had have several panels that you would attach and you have a, a you know, basically a, a ballast, a chain to, to keep it uh, at the floor or the bottom of your river or lake. And that will help out uh, control um, the, the quality of water, the oil and sediment to kind of mitigate those uh, situation. Control, retaining walls and embankments. So the idea right here is that we, if you have a project, you have your embankments, Eventually, um, you could have um, some growth of, of vegetation to keep it stabilized, but the seeds, they need to be there long enough for the seeds to take root and to grow. Uh, so what we have to, to propose, these are blankets that will prevent the washout uh, of the seeds along the banks. Very straightforward. Here we are. We we see it very nice and, and well done. Keeps everything uh, stable until we see growth. So um, unroll vertical on vertically or on the slopes overlaps uh, six inches. You would need some wooden stakes or U-shaped staples to keep it in, in the ground so that it doesn't go away. Here we have another picture with the stakes, wooden stakes. Uh, are there uh, pictures showing a blanket for erosion control? Very uh, um, good, good, good concept. Uh, so right here we see uh, just the tables of different products we have, uh, and and, and they're recommended applications for those products. Um, so if we look, we see the the straw fibers. Uh, and then you see the the mass per unit, the function longevity, <laughs> appropriate slopes and, and channel flow. Um, so if 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 you go with the uh, straw fibers, well, it's going to be less than twelve months. But if you go to the the wooden fibers, well, you're more uh, you know about twenty four months. So depending on on how long you need to to for those areas to be protected, that kind of helps the engineers to have a better selection of products and also. Um, the maximum or upper slopes where these can be installed. So it's very uh, straightforward uh, data for a selection of product. We also have uh, geo cells. Um, so the geo cells is, is basically a ship fairly flat and then the contractor opens them up and required to be filled with stone inside or sand or whatever the product you guys have. Um, so we're gonna move more to the certifications. Uh, so this is um, where we are uh, as far as certifications. We see that from our Laval plan, this is where we fabricate. Um, we see different types of um, standards on the left side that is mentioned right there. Um, the Green Guard Gold, it's something very interesting for us. The Green Guard goal uh, is just to show um, that this is a certification that we do have for our factory in Laval, where uh, basically what it says is that uh, our products are made without any uh, added chemicals. Um, our factory is very clean, so we, we don't use any uh, water, uh, which is amazing. So we fabricate our products without any water, so there's no um, byproducts of water rejected from our factories, very clean and clear. Um, 
clean pro pro uh, procedures. Uh, when we do roll the product uh, to be shipped, uh, we're, we're going to trim a bit of the extremities to have nice rolls. So those are, are, are byproduct or those trimmed fibers are thrown back into the production uh, for for what we do. Uh, so at the end of the day, um, we are very a clean environment uh, without any uh, uh, reject. Uh, so it's, it's, it's fairly um, nice. And because we don't have any additive or chemicals or whatever uh, in the geotextile, it means with the, the green guard gold, it means that our products out there to be installed um, anywhere there's no uh, um, risk of contamination, contaminating the water or whatsoever. There's it's a it's a clean product that doesn't dis disintegrate. Um, so it's a it's a very uh, environmentally good thing. Um, on top of that, um, it's very easy to install. It will last basically forever. And then uh, you have the possibility of reducing the amount of crushed stone when you, you're building a road, a street. So it's all a win-win-win. We do have uh, documentations uh, accessible um, to you uh, for sure. I just want to take the time to go over this uh, with you guys because this is what you're going to be left with, right? basically. Uh, you'll have a project in the coming months or years. So, but if you you want to have some tools, some um, documentations to um, to make better selections. So, right here, and these will be uh, sent to you um, uh, with the um, uh, webinar, uh, a copy of the webinar. You will you will have those links uh, for you guys to. to to go as a reference. So if we go into the brochure, so basically uh, we're showing all the products. We have the contents of everything depending on, on where your projects are. So road works, landscape, construction works, hydraulic works, so projects. So all is right there. So you can go on our website also, uh, and all you, th this is all available. So you can see some pictures with numbers to where those products can be installed. So temporary roadways, and then we kind of see the way it's done. So if I just go for drainage, so this is where we would talk about the drain cutex, the drainatex. You see, um, you know, very easily where those are uh, installed with um, additional uh, data about them. So it's a very well-made document. You see a lot of information to where these can be installed. So if we uh, keep looking into those documentations, we have the selection guide. With the selection guide, it will help out to look at, at, at the different aspect of what your goal is. So are you looking into filtration, separation, um, drainage, protection, control, depending on, on, on the application? This is a table that kind of brings it, it all to you guys. So to find out what you need to select. So you have those properties of, of control, and then you have your general, if you look on the left side, you see your road works, uh, applications, constructions works, uh, landscaping area, hydraulic. So you kind of see where you fit. And, and from there you see the applications and then you, you go and you pick, you select the product. Very well, well made. Uh, some other guides right here. So we see right here, some, some guides regarding of, of some pro province. So we kind of see everything right here about these. I'm just going to go to another one. If you look right here, we have like the N New Brunswick DTI. Oh, sorry. Go back. 
So if we look at uh, so the, the we we kind of see the New Brunswick DTI right there. Uh, you we see also the Nova Scotia is right over here uh, and the BNQ. So we see those and what is required from those provinces, and then with the product that we that meets those requirements. So very quick and, and easy to find out where we fall uh, to select the, the correct geotextile for your project. Now, uh, also we will have the installation guide. So again, with the installation guide, it's all available and will be made available for you. Um, so those are all the journal modes and, and the steps uh, to install that product. Very straightforward, very easy to, to see and, 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 and to understand. Just a, just a note about when we are, when a contractor installs a geotextile on a road, um, you see the overlap right here. With this overlap, um, it, the contractor should push the material. So you, you push from the geotextile that is on top towards the one that is at the bottom. So that way you don't have a separation. If the contractor install the material with the other direction, there's a risk. If he's coming from this side, he's, there's a risk that the, the material that he's installing could lift the geotextile and, and have all kinds of bad installation because you're kind of pushing underneath the product and everything. So just a word of caution, push your material from the panel that's on the top towards the panel that's at lower. So now you don't have to, uh, you will not separate the, your geotextile on, on the job site. Those are all tricks uh, that we, we share with you guys on the installation. So those are all available um, for you. So now uh, we're pretty much at the end uh, of, of what I wanted to share with you. I, I kind of skipped very quickly. There's a lot of information. Maybe I talked a bit too fast there. Sorry about that. Uh, but everything is available. Um, we will send, uh, you know, uh, the webinar and all kinds of information for you guys. Uh, Benjamin, do we have a... Yeah, so Sorry. before we begin the, the questions uh, session, um, I just want to uh, share a quick reminder. You can uh, ask your question using the QA bottom at the, at the bottom of your screen. So uh, feel free to ask any questions to uh, Philip here. And like Philip said, uh, we'll send tomorrow a, a reminder email with all of the tools, um, a recap of the webinar, uh, the link to connect with uh, Philip. And uh, if you have more questions, maybe that come uh, throughout the days, you can ask Philip. So yeah, first question we have, um, can we use the BX2000 Agile Grid for, no, uh, for reinforcement behind a retaining wall? Okay, good questions. Um, so the BX2000, this is the BX2000-3000. What we have is a square when we look at, so it means that this has the property to be very strong in two directions. That's why we call it the B for by direction, BX2000. It's very strong on both ways. When we have a, um, a, a retaining wall installation, uh, so with the retaining wall, basically there's the, the, the forces that's gonna be put on the geo grid is only in one direction. So because it's only in one direction, we would have basically a geo grid that would be more of a long rectangle. So along, so it's like if we would, wouldn't, we, this would be removed, these three parts would be removed and we would be left with something very rectangular and long. So it is very strong in one direction, but kind of weak on the other side. So a better product would be to install a, a U, instead of a BX, it would be a UX, unidirectional geogrid would be a better selection. Great, thank you. So next question, um, do you use recycled material in your product? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, we don't use uh, recycled fibers from post uh, consumption, but within our 
within our factory, like I've mentioned earlier, uh, with the green gold uh, standard. Um, so what's happening here is that uh, we do trim to, to make better rolls when it's, it's shipped. Um, so those small parts, those trims are thrown back into the system. So can we say that we have recycled? Not really, but it's just within our facility when we do our production. Uh, we're going to reuse everything so we don't need to waste fibers. So we, within the, the but th this is all controlled, all tested. There's quality controls. So at the end of it, you have a good product that meets the standards of whatever you you guys were asking. Um, so with the green gold, that's what it, we're talking about. So we have a good product that meets the environment without any issue. And we don't contaminate our any water by doing the production. So very clean. So when it, our products is installed out there, we don't contaminate It's a, because we're a clean product. Yeah. And I just want to add that we are talking about geosynthetics because all of our pipe product, uh, uh, HDP pipe product, are made from uh, recycled materials where where the st standards allows it. So, yeah, uh, that was about the geosynthetics, right? So, um, yeah, that, that's all for for today. We don't have uh, any more questions. Um, like I said, if you can, uh, you, you will be able to uh, connect with uh, Philip after the webinar. Um, and if you can take a few minutes to uh, just complete the brief survey that will be available to you. You'll also be able to request an uh, uh, attestation of search, uh, certification of attestation. Um, so right on, on the thank you page after the webinar. So if you have uh, any more questions, uh, feel free to contact us for your project. Uh, our team is always available. And uh, once again, thank you for joining us. Um, and I, I hope uh, you did like our masterclass today and uh, we see you soon. Thank you very much.